Hey everyone, so in this video I want to talk a little bit about exponential decay and just kind of give a summary of uh, what we talked about today in class. And then I'm also going to touch a little bit on the negative exponent laws. Okay, so in class today we talked about how uh, exponential decay is an example of an exponential function. And we, we brought up exponential functions yesterday when we were uh, talking about exponential growth. So it's going to follow the same, for, uh, same kind of format for the equation. It's going to be y is equal to a times b to the power of x. So that's a, that's, again, that's an exponential function. Um, but when, in exponential growth, we said that the b value had to be bigger than 1. Well, in exponential decay, it's not going to be quite like that. It's going to be uh, the b value is going to have to be between 0 and 1. So it's going to be y is equal to a times b to the power of x, where 0 is less than b is less than 1. So b is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. And the idea is that in exponential decay, you're going to be continuously multiplying by some number, which is less than 1, which is why the, the value keeps getting smaller and smaller. So in terms of a graph of exponential decay, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so one thing I want you to notice is that when we had exponential growth, right, that we, we talked about how the function grew quickly. Well, if it's, if it's exponential decay, so functions which decay exponentially are going to decrease very quickly. Okay, so they're not going to be increasing quickly, they're going to be decreasing quickly. Okay? And one last thing quickly on exponential decay. Uh, let's take a look at a table of values. So uh, in a table of values, let me just populate this table of values here. Okay, I want you guys to notice that each y value, each consecutive y value, uh, ha is basically a multiple of 0 0.5. So in other words, to get to, from 8 to 4, you could multiply by 0 0.5. To get from 4 to 2, you multiply by 0 0.5. To get from 2 to 1, you multiply by 0 0.5, and so on. So we actually do have a common ratio, just like before. All right? And notice that this common ratio is, is 0 0.5. Right? It's a value between 0 and 1. Uh, so although you could think about this as uh, dividing by 2 for every, uh, every next y value that we get, I want you to think about it in terms of multiplying by 0 0.5, and that way we can clearly see that it would be a, uh, an exponential function because it does have a common ratio. All right, next I want to just quickly go through some negative exponents so, and some negative exponent laws. So first one we talked about today is if you have b to the power of negative n, so if you have some base to the power of a negative exponent, you can evaluate that by taking the reciprocal and making it a positive exponent, just as we have here. So b to the power of negative n is equal to 1 over b to the power of positive n. Now, uh, one caveat to this is that you need to make sure that you're not dividing by 0, and we would, would be dividing by 0 if b was 0. So we have to make sure that we clearly state that b is not equal to 0. And the second uh, negative exponent law, which is actually, it's, it's the same thing, it's just stated a little bit differently, is if we have a fraction that's being put to a negative exponent, a over b to the power of negative n, you can evaluate that as well by taking the reciprocal and putting that to a positive exponent. So if we have a over b to the power of negative n, that's the same thing as b over a to the power of positive n. Uh, and again, the only thing we need to, to make sure is that we're not dividing by 0. Uh, on the left side of that equation, we have a over b, so we would have a problem if b was 0. And on the right side of the equation, we would have a problem if a was 0, because that's in the denominator. So in other words, a and b have to not be equal to 0. So a or b, not equal to 0. All right, so let me just show you a quick, a quick couple examples of, going, of using these laws. So for example, let's suppose we have 3 x times x to the power of negative 4. Right? And we want to evaluate this with a positive exponent. So we want to make sure that we state this with a positive exponent. All right, so you can see that we have a negative exponent on the x value. Notice that the uh, that exponent of negative 4 is not affecting the 3. It's only affecting the x. So because it's only affecting the x, we're going to want to take the reciprocal of, uh, of the x to the power of negative 4 term and express it with a positive exponent. So what's that going to look like? Well, we'll have 3 times 1 over x to the power of positive 4. So notice we took the reciprocal and we made the exponent positive. But there's one other thing we could do. Uh, since 3 times 1 over, uh, 1 over x to the power of 4 is something that we could multiply, uh, when, we, when we multiply those two out, we're just going to get 3 over x to the power of 4. Okay, so another thing you can kind of think of in terms of what a negative exponent does is it also moves something from the top of a fraction uh, to the bottom of a fraction, right? It moves something from the, uh, from the numerator to the denominator, or actually vice versa, right? It will move, also move things from the denominator to the numerator, okay, for anything that it's actually affecting. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's say I have 4a squared over 3b, and that is all being put to the power of negative 2. 
So according to the exponent law I have above that, we know that we can evaluate that with a positive exponent if we take the reciprocal. So if we take the reciprocal inside the brackets, so the reciprocal of our fraction is going to be 3b over 4a squared, and that's going to be put to the power of positive 2. And that positive 2 is affecting both the numerator and the denominator of uh, that fraction. So in other words, we'll have to do 3b times 3b, which is going to give us 9b squared over 4a squared times 4a squared, which is 16a to the power of 4. Okay, guys? So this was exponential decay and negative exponents. Take care.